So, uh, thank you, sir, uh, for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, respected chairperson, the distinguished doctors present here, very good evening to all of you. And at the outset, I must thank uh, Diabetes India team for giving this opportunity and especially uh, the honor for being a co-speaker with my mentor and teacher, uh, Professor Anil Vansali, sir. So, I'll be discussing on a, a topic which is insulin co-formulation, clinical attributes beyond uh, efficacy. So this is the financial disclosure and uh, we know many challenges are faced uh, when we start uh, therapy in a person with diabetes but uh, to name a few and especially in our Indian setting these are the five important uh, uh, deterrent or problems in uh, or the challenges in diabetes management. First is the glycemic control is poor and it has been shown in various data that almost 76.6% of adults with type 2 diabetes in India fail to achieve a target A1C level of less than 7%. The second is poor postprandial glucose control. We all know that in India and especially in the uh, Southeast Asia region, we are mostly rice eaters or carbohydrate rich meal we consume so that the postprandial glucose is always high and poor postprandial glucose control has been shown in 83% of adults with type 2 diabetes in India. The third is therapeutic inertia and uh, we know about the inertia that can come from the patient or from the clinician and uh, there are data to suggest in India that almost 10 important years is lost before we start insulin therapy and even if we start insulin therapy, we do not adequately intensify the insulin therapy. The next is non-adherence to therapy and uh, uh, there are studies which suggest more than 50% of the participants were non-adherent to anti-diabetic medications and the fifth and most important which which was told by uh, sir also is uh, about hypoglycemia adults with type 2 diabetes have an estimated 3.4 severe and 14.6 uh, non severe hypoglycemia per year so these are some of the five important uh, problems or the deterrents in management of hyperglycemia in uh, in indian patients so what should be the holistic approach i think once we start with a therapy that should not only address the efficacy uh, or uh, that should that should not only address the glycemic control that is fasting plasma glucose postprandial plasma glucose and the hb1c but it should have other factors which will be more beneficial for the patient especially in the indian settings and the problems which i have discussed that that is it should have lower level of hypoglycemia there should be flexibility that, that the patient should not wait for a long period of time after taking an insulin the regimen should be simple. We should not be uh, making a complex regimen uh, for our patients. The convenience of the device should be there and the quality of life should be better. And finally, we pay from our own packet, pocket in Indian uh, patients, so it should be cost effective. So probably the only solution that lies or one of the best solution that lies is to use a IDEGASP uh, co-formulation. And why it is called co-formulation? Because there are, in that solution, there are two insulins which are there. One is ultra-long-acting basal insulin, that is insulin deglutic. And the other one is rapid-acting insulin, that is the insulin aspart. The ultra-long-acting insulin remains as dihexamer in that solution. And the rapid-acting aspart remains as hexamer in that solution. And the two insulin components do not interact with each other and the subcutaneous tissue, thereby retaining their individual properties. So probably once uh, when our chairperson was telling that I should be clarifying what is a premix versus what is a co-formulation, the co-formulation is that two important uh, or the two insulins are there in the solution, but they they have maintained their own quality, they have not dissociated, they have not made a uh, chimeric molecule, so like in premix uh, insulin. So that is the importance of co-formulation and for that reason the individual pharmacokinetic and dynamic properties have uh, have been well uh, kept in that solution. So once IDEGASP has been injected, the prandial component of insulin aspart will exactly show the same effect as individual aspart and the insulin Deglutec will have that same flatter profile what has been shown by sir in once IDEGASP has been injected. So the individual characteristic of both the insulin have been maintained in that particular solution. So for that reason, uh, our own guidelines like RSSDI ESI clinical practice 
guidelines have also endorsed to use idegasp uh, as a choice for insulin initiation. The other advantage is that once we are initiating with idegasp, it is easier to titrate also and to intensify also. We can initiate, optimize and intensify with a single device and that has been also mentioned in that clinical practice guidelines. Uh, they've also cautioned that uh, avoid using insulin as a threat. We should not be uh, threatening the patient that we are using insulin because of the, it's the last resort. We should alleviate patient anxiety about insulin. And insulin therapy should be considered in all patients failing to achieve glycemic control three or more with three or more oral anti-diabetic agents. Now, IDEGASP has extensively been studied in phase 3 clinical trials. There are phase 3 and phase 3b clinical trial where it has been compared with insulin detemer versus BIASP 30 versus Glargin U100 versus basal insulin IASP. Uh, or versus IDEGASP. So, uh, in all these settings, there is a robust data uh, with IDEGASP and there is a robust data with real world evidences also and many are from uh, Indian data has been there and it has been published data also. So, uh, not only the, uh, the uh, clinical trial data or randomized control trials are there, but also there are robust real world evidences. Now coming to the uh, important point like how efficacy of IDEGASP uh, uh, is important. So this is a study where uh, it's a randomized control trial where the efficacy and safety with IDEGASP versus once a day insulin glargin has been compared. So these are basically insulin naive patients with type 2 diabetes. On one arm IDEGASP once a day plus minus OID have been initiated. The other arm insulin glargin plus minus OID have been given. So, th these are the two arms. And what they found was that the arm where IDEGASP was used, there was 1.4% superior A1C reduction. Fasting plasma glucose, uh, similar APG control with 70% of the basal component. And there was significantly better PPG control when the uh, IDEGASP was given with that meal. So, uh, obviously, since the ASPAT component was there, the postprandial blood glucose was also significantly lower. With the IDEGAS, 72% uh, more patients achieve their target. So when IDEGAS has been compared with uh, insulin glargin as an insulin initiation, then definitely there was a uh, uh, better glycemic control. Coming to the efficacy from the ARISE uh, data, ARISE India study is also uh, another important study where they have taken 185 individuals with type 2 diabetes and they have given IDEGASP as per the protocols and uh, there were visits of G uh, visit 1 and at week 26 to 36 they have also observed those uh, uh, patients who are on IDEGASP. So uh, the, the total population once daily use of IDEGASP has been shown to be in 43% of patients and twice daily IDEGASP has been observed in 56% of patients. The mean baseline A1C was 9.8% which reduced at the end of study period to 8.2%. So there was almost like a 1.6% reduction of the HbA1c and the change of fasting plasma glucose was also significant in the range of uh, 52 milligram per deciliter with the use of IDEGASP. So those were the slides or those were the points where efficacy has been shown vis-a-vis -vis insulin glargin at the initiation and also with the ARISE data. Now the second component is hypoglycemia and that's a very important point what uh, Sarah has also shown. So fear of future hypoglycemic episode is common in people with type 2 diabetes. So those who have one episode of severe hypoglycemia, 84% of people in them experience fear of future uh, episodes uh, and 29.9% of patients who have non-severe hypoglycemia experience fear about the future hypoglycemic episodes. And after experience with one episode of hypoglycemia, 16.2% skip their anti-diabetic uh, regimen. And due to fear of future hypoglycemia, 36% report decreasing their insulin dose and 11.7% report missing the insulin injection. So not only hypoglycemia is dangerous at that particular point, but the fear about hypoglycemia actually uh, creates a poor glycemic control, uh, poor compliance with the medication and, and even missing the insulin therapies. 
The ERISE data again, the global cohort, they have shown with the use of IDEGAS, the non-severe hypoglycemia has been significantly lowered and also the severe hypoglycemia has been significantly lowered. And treatment with IDEGAS re resulted in lower number of non-severe and severe hypoglycemic episodes. Another study, the SMART study, uh, they have also shown that the confirmed hypoglycemia with the use of IDEGAS at the visit 2, visit 3 and visit 4 have significantly reduced and severe hypoglycemia have also been reduced with the use of IDEGAS. Now the other point which is important for a better compliance is the simplicity of the dosing regimen. Now if we start with a basal uh, base therapy, we start with the basal insulin, we try to control the fasting plasma glucose and once the fasting plasma glucose is controlled and still the HP1C is higher, we start with the parenteral insulin with the largest meal of the day and we call it as the basal plus therapy. Then we go for adding a second prandial with the second largest meal if the glycemic control is not maintained and then go for a third dose we call it as a full blown or a full form of uh, basal bolus therapy with one basal and three uh, prandial insulin. But that, that creates actually more complex regimen and you require two types of pens or two types of uh, insulin and there are three to four pricks in a day at the maximum and that also leads to frequent monitoring of the blood glucose with SMBG. But if you are starting with an IDEGAS then you start with once, once a day as uh, the initiation and you intensify the therapy, we, you increase the dose, try to achieve the glucose. If it is not achieved you can go for intensification with two sorts of IDEGAS. So uh, that, that is how the simplicity of regimen is. You can start with one and you can go up to two also. And the, uh, the number of pricks, the number of monitoring have been significantly reduced if we are going in that second regimen that is with the IDEGAS intensification. Now IDEGASP has also been compared with a basal bolus therapy and this is a very uh, elegant study where they have done patients with type 2 diabetes, 532 patients uncontrolled on basal insulin, they have divided into two arms, one arm they have given IDEGASP plus minus OID, the other arm they have started with insulin glargin U300 with insulin aspart one shot plus minus OID. So basically IDEGASP in one arm and the other arm was basal plus regimen and that was the treatment period one for 26 weeks and after that they have intensified the therapy with the basal plus regimen going into full blown basal bolus therapy with two or three uh, prandial insulin and the other arm they have converted from IDEGAS once daily to twice daily maximum. What they found was that at the end of the study there was a significant lesser dose requirement with IDEGAS uh, intensification the chances of hypoglycemia, especially the nocturnal hypoglycemia, has significantly reduced at 45% at the end of study 1 and uh, almost like 39% in the end of uh, intensification period. So not only you require lesser amount of insulin with that type of intensification, but also the, um, uh, the uh, chances of hypoglycemia has also gone down. The conclusion from that study was that IDEGASP achieved similar improvement in fasting plasma glucose and A1C compared to basal bolus insulin therapy, 6.6% significantly lower dose requirement with IDEGASP and fewer mean number of daily injection because here you have four sorts of insulin with uh, basal bolus and here you have two shots of insulin with IDEGASP. Now how you are going to switch IDEGASP from other insulin regimen and uh, if, if someone is on basal insulin, the same can be if you are intensifying, you can change over to IDEGASP once in a day. If someone is in premix insulin twice a day, you can change over to IDEGAS once in a day or twice in a day. If someone is in basal bolus therapy, it has to be individualized and IDEGAS can be titrated to twice a day. And even if it is required, you can give insulin aspart with the third largest meal. So uh, basically individualization is absolutely needed, but you can convert one regimen to the other. So switching needs to be individualized better based on the careful consideration of basal bolus doses. Now the fourth important point is quality of life and uh, there are data to suggest that uh, the insulin dose requirement has sig significantly come down uh, we, uh, in basal and total daily insulin dose with uh, IDEGASP at 26 weeks. And the diabetes therapy related quality of life in this study it has uh, also qu significantly 
improved with the use of Ridegas in comparison to Glargin U100 or U300. And the treatment preference in that particular study, 74.2% have actually preferred to use this class, uh, this uh, regimen rather than going for a basal-based uh, Glargin U100 or U300 regimen. So switching to Idegasp is associated with a lower total uh, and basal insulin dose requirement and significant improvement in quality of life. The impact of quality of life has also been studied uh, by Dr. Koville et al. In a, it's a single center study where 26 questions were asked to people who were on Idegasp where they found that 94.2% managed their day-to-day -day activity better after Idegasp. 89.89% as a patient had improved quality of life and 86% have found it comfortable to inject Idegasp in different social situations. I'll tell what, what different social situations are. And the reduction of the pill burden was also observed in that particular study. Dosing flexibility and convenience, uh, the Idegasp has to be ad administered with the largest meal or the meal with the largest carbohydrate content in a day. Initiate with 10 units uh, with the major meal. Administer Idegas OD with the most carbohydrate heavy meal and can be given with different meals on different days. So that is probably more important. And administration of Idegas BID with the two most carbohydrate heavy uh, meals can be given. So the main meal concept is that even if the person is taking different meal patterns on different days, they can actually take the insulin according to the largest meal of the day. For example, if on a given weekdays, the person is taking the largest carb meal at the night, you can give Idegasp at the night. But on the weekend, if he is taking a larger meal at the lunch time, you can actually give on that day uh, before lunch the insulin. So that adds to the maximum flexibility for the patient and probably the quality of life has improved with that. The practical recommendation for titration is also very easy with that as per the recommendation. If the fasting is more, you uh, titrate with plus 2 units. If the fasting is in target, maintain that dose. If it is below the fasting target, you reduce by minus 2 units and that you can do every weekly. And suppose you have given Idegas as once in a day, uh, maybe at the dinner time, then you titrate with the fasting plasma glucose, uh, label the night dose of Idegas. If you are giving 2 Idegas, then the pre-dinner uh, sugar will uh, be uh, dictating the morning Idegas and the fasting will be dictating the night Idegas doses. The convenient and patient friendly insulin pen device, I think Sarah has already told about that. There is a FlexTouch pen device and also the NovoPen 4 which have been used for the last 5 years with uh, all sorts of advantages to that. Cost effectiveness of Idegas, in fact uh, I was one of the uh, first author in that uh, study where we have uh, um, given a poster to the uh, ISPOR uh, conference where we have actually analyzed the short term cost effectiveness analysis based on the step by step clinical trial over one year in India. Step by step is a uh, clinical trial which was done globally but we took out our own or the Indian subpopulation and we tried to find out the cost effectiveness. Now the left side was actually the insulin glargin with insulin aspart titration and the uh, right side is the uh, insulin idegas which has been titrated twice. Though uh, grossly you can feel that probably the cost of idegas is higher on the right side but if you compare the two arms then the uh, insulin glargin cost is in the blue one and the red one is the prandial insulin which you are using. The green one is the number of glucometer strips you are using or the number of needles you are using and the hypoglycemia that is happening. So though it is almost similar, the basal bolus uh, or the idegas, there was definitely the cost factor was lower with idegas and uh, the, the uh, quality of life improvement was also uh, there in this study. And almost the patient is, uh, is saving something like 5000 per year with this uh, regimen when we have retrospectively analyzed this two data. Along with better flexibility and convenience, Idegasp is found to be cost dominant compared to basal bolus therapy. So coming to the last slide, Idegasp is a prudent choice for Indian scenario. Why? Because we have shown the efficacy in terms of the fasting PP and HbA1c. We have shown the lower hypoglycemia potential. We have shown the meal time flexibility which is, uh, which is a much advantage to our patients. Simplified regimen, just one pen, twice sort. And that's all. Convenience of the device, better quality of life and cost effectiveness. 
So with that, I'll end my talk. Thank you for the patience. Uh, thank you.